Hello everyone, welcome to Master to Teach Step by Step Guide. In this video tutorial, we are going to learn as a software engineer how to start a new project, what is a use case diagram, different elements of the use case diagram, how to draw a use case diagram. You will also learn what is and how to write high level use case description. Yeah. Also, I will cover extended use case description including an alternative on it. As a bonus, in last, we will see the example of use case diagram. I will try my best to explain step by step from the beginning. If you haven't subscribed to our channel, please click on the subscribe button and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Ok, let's start. Imagine that you are working as a software engineer in IT company. Your company has done contract with organization to develop software for them. Now, how do you start the project as a software engineer? Sure that you are not going to start from coding. As a software engineer, you will follow the system development life cycle. First of all, we need the requirement of the system to start the project. The first step is to gather the requirement. During this phase of software development, you have to choose the best software development methodology so that you can work systematically and smoothly. Software development methodology will help you to execute, track the project and reduce the risk of project failure. The phases of system development lifecycle are number 1. Initiation Number 2. System concept development, number 3 planning, number 4 requirement analysis, number 5 design, number 6 development, number 7 integration and testing, number 8 implementation, number 9 operation and maintenance, whereas number 10 disposition. After requirement analysis, we move forward designing the system before we start the coding. Most of the students misunderstood regarding designing word. Designing in software engineering is not talking about making wireframe or prototype designing. It's not about the interface design and the color combination. Designing means visualizing the internal systems in the diagram. It's a blueprint of the system. Software design is concerned with deriving the solution. Design can be traced to a customer requirement. Designing is an iterative process through which requirements are translated into a blueprint for the software to be developed. We start the design with the high level of abstraction. We can start design in structure view like starting from context diagram, data flow diagram, DFT, whereas design can be drawn in object oriented view. In object oriented view, we start designing from use case diagram. Explaining all the systems to clients or team member or someone else is quite difficult. The explainer may forget some main feature of the system while the listener may have lost what he or she is talking about. Explainer think that he has explained very well but actually the listener may not understand it. For example, if you want to make a new app and explain it but the listener doesn't understand how they will interact with the app or what it would do. In this type of scenario, the use case diagram is very helpful. Simply, it shows a system or application, people or organization or other that interact with the system, basic flow of the system that the system or application does. It's a very high level diagram and typically won't show a lot of detail. But it's a great way to communicate complex ideas in a fairly basic way. Use cases show the functionality of the system from the user's perspective. Each use case's name is usually an active pub and a noun phrase. The use case diagram is usually used to model a current system as well as to model a proposed system. How to start drawing use case diagram? First of all, we have to list out all the use cases and identify the actor. We will learn what are the use cases and who are the actors in few minutes. 
After listing out use cases and identifying the actor, prioritize use cases and focus from the top of the list. Develop each of the priority use cases starting with writing description for each. There are four different elements of the use case diagram. They are number one, system, number two, actor, number three, use cases, whereas number four, relationship. Let's go one by one. Number one, system. The project that you are developing is a system. It could be an application software, desktop, web or mobile, a website, software component, business process or any other projects. The system is representing a rectangle shape where the system name is written inside the top of the system. The rectangle shape helps to define the overall scope of the system that you are going to develop so that everything that the system does job places inside the system whereas anything outside the rectangle doesn't happen in the system. Number 2. Actor The actor is represented by the human sticky image. Anyone who used to perform a certain function in the system is actor. Actors may be someone or something that can be a person, an organization, another system, machine, or any external device. So, who or what is going to use our system is actor like customer, staff, admin, bank, student, teacher, etc. Actor can be categorized in two types. Number one is primary actor, whereas number two is secondary actor. A primary actor initiates the use of the system, while the secondary actor is more reactionary. For example, Customer are the primary actor because the system is mostly used by the customer, whereas bank is a secondary actor. After all, the bank is only going to perform certain functions once the primary actor does something. In other simple words, primary actor requests something to the system and secondary actor responds to the primary actors. Primary actors should be positioned in the left side of the system whereas secondary actors are placed on the right side of the system. 3. Use case All the functionality that the system does is the use case. In another word, the list of tasks which the system can perform is use case. Use case is denoted by the oval shape, for example, login, check balance, transfer fund, make a payment, display error message, verify login details, etc. It's good practice to use the use case in a logical order where possible like in top, login, after that book service, then after that make payment in this way. Number 4. Relationship As we know, an actor uses the system to achieve a goal by interacting at least one of the use cases within the system. For example, customer can log in, book service, make payments, etc. So, we draw the solid line between the actor and the use case to show the relationship. This type of relationship is called as an association and it just signifies a basic communication or interaction. Let's go through the type of relationship in addition to the associations. Number 1. Include Number 2. Extend Whereas Number 3. Generalization Whenever a customer requests a login, the system will automatically call the login verification use case before completing the login process. But if the login detail is incorrect, the system will display an error message. So, error message is another extra use case to show the relationship. Neither of the actors is directly initiating these verify login display error message etc. use cases. They are just immediately going to happen within the system whenever the actor performs the login use case. The relationship between the login use case and the verify login details use case is include, which is written as include because as the login use case is called by the actor, verify login details use case is automatically performed by the system. Here, login use case is the base use case whereas verify login detail is an included use case. In include relationship, whenever the base use case is in execution, the included use case is auto-executed as well. 
In another way, the base use case requires an included use case to be complete. For showing include relationship, draw a dash line with an arrow that points towards included use case and write include as a label. Another type of relationship is extend relationship, where it's defined the relationship between the base use case and the extend use case. In extend relationship, the extend use case may or may not execute when the base use case is executing. The extend use case will only happen if certain criteria are met. In the above example, the login is the base use case whereas the display error message is extend use case. The display error message use case may or may not execute when base use case login use case is executed. For the extend relationship between the base and the extend use case, draw the dash line with an arrow that points towards the base use case and write extend as label between them. Another the base example to demonstrate the difference between include and extend relationship is if you sneeze, you will close your eyes. That's an include relationship because it's going to happen whenever we sneeze. Whereas if you sneeze, you might say excuse me. That's an extended relationship because it supplements the sneeze but isn't completely necessary in the sneezing process. Note that include happens every time, extend happens just sometimes and don't forget that the arrow points in the opposite directions. Also, multiple base use case can point to the same included or extended use case. Avoid premature use, overuse and misuse of include and extend relationship. The simpler your diagram, the better. When producing a use case model, always keep in mind that you are trying to portray and for what purpose. Another type of relationship is generalization, also known as inheritance. Generalization is showing the relationship between the parent and the child use case relationship. In simple words, generalization is showing the type of actor or use case in the system. For the generalization relationship, draw a solid line with an arrow from the child use case or actor to parent use case or actor as shown in figure. For example, the system may have new customer as well as old customer which can be shown in generalization as here. Another type of notation is extension point. Extension points are just a detailed portion of extended relationship and also can be shown in the note what sort of conditions would lead to this extension point. In this way, you can draw the complete use case diagram with various elements that helps explain what the system does. Note that even complex systems should be restricted to a simplistic visualization of functionality, behavior and relationship. Now let's move to the type of use case description. Number 1. High level use case description. Number 2. Expanded use case description. Number 3 is essential and number 4 is real. We are going through the high level and expanded use case description. High level use case description is a short non-detailed description of each required process. In high level use case description, we will not go through the details on the interactions. It's a short non-detailed description as shown in below. The high level use case contain use case where we write the name of the use case that we are going to describe in high level use case description. Number two is actor who is going to call this use case. In description, we write a short non-detailed description. Another type of use case description is expanded use case description. In expanded use case description, we write the interaction between the actor and the system, how the use case is going to Perform. In expanded use case description, we go through the interaction between the actor and the system. It is the expanded use case description where we write each step that takes to happen while executing that use case. For example, enroll use case. In enroll use case, the actor and the system is going to perform like this. 
In this way, we write the each and every step that involves in, in the expanded use case description. Let's go through the alternative. Alternative is nothing more than the listing out wherever the use case can be in. For example, in line number 5, the actor clicks on the chosen course. What if, if the client or customer could not find the suitable course for him or her? Like we write alternative courses in line number 5, the new student doesn't see a suitable course, the use case in. Also, in line number 8, it says that pays by credit card or debit card. What if, if the user or client doesn't have card details? The new student doesn't have credit or debit card available. The use case in. In this way, we list out wherever the use case can be in, in the alternative section. I hope you learned from this video tutorial. If you have any questions or comments, please make sure to leave a comment in comment section below. Also, please be sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Thank you very much for watching. Check us out for more in IT tutorial and guide in website master2teach.com. And we will see you again soon. Bye.